हेलो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू टूडे सेशन वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स दैट इज दैट ऑफ द पॉलीसेकराइड्स सो पॉलीसेकराइड्स आर एसेंशियली पॉलीमर्स ऑफ मोनोसेकराइड्स सो बेसिकली दे आर एसेंशियली लॉन्ग चेन मोनोमेरिक यूनिट्स ऑफ इधर ग्लूकोज फ्रैक्टोज और एनी अदर मोनोसेकराइड दैट वी हैव स्टडीड दे डिफर फ्रॉम वन एंड अदर नॉट ओनली इन देयर कंपोजिशन ऑफ देयर मोनोसेकराइड्स बट ऑल्सो इन देयर स्ट्रक्चर सम पॉलीसेकराइड्स आर अनब्रांच्ड लीनियर पॉलीमर्स ऑफ मोनोसेकराइड्स वेल अदर्स आर क्वाइट हाईली ब्रांच्ड पॉलीसेकराइड्स like starch or cellulose or glycogen they are composed of only one type of sugar units that is glucose means these three categories of polysaccharides will be made up of only repetitive glucose units so they are classified uh, into one category and such kind of polysaccharides on hydrolysis yield a single type of monosaccharide units whereas other forms like chitin or glycoprotein if you go for hydrolysis of them they will yield a mixture of units so basically polysaccharides depending on the fact ki when you are breaking them down what you are exactly getting they can be homo polysaccharides or they can be hetero polysaccharides so homo polysaccharides if we say for their example then it will be starch then it will be cellulose and the one which is get uh, le- uh, stored in liver that is glycogen and if you go for hetero polysaccharides they will be mainly glycoproteins or chitins so this on hydrolysis will produce same type of monosaccharides that is why the word homo and the other category will produce mixture of monosaccharides means they are made up of more than one type of monosaccharide units so that's why the name is heteropolysaccharides but basing on their functions what do they perform in living systems polysaccharides are grouped into two main categories those which uh, store the food material they are called as the storage polysaccharides and do, those which make up the cell wall or any such kind of structure they are otherwise called as the structural polysaccharides so if we classify or start with the food storage polysaccharides the most important under this categories will be definitely starch which is of plant origin glycogen as i have told earlier that is of animal origin another plant material that uh, we have not so specifically heard about that is inulin so let us start our discussion from starch so basically it is a complex homo polysaccharide and it is present in abundance as a reserve food material in the grains of various cereals like rice wheat barley maize oats rye etc so grains of various type of you can say cereals contain them they are also present in seeds of dal like plants or that of the legumes so dals also contain starch 
definitely the tubers of potato or sweet potato they also contain a lot of starch they are also present in arrowroot tapioca these are also rooty vegetables tapioca is a very commonly ed edible thing in south india it is also present in fruits like banana in abundance generally fruits contain fructose but banana is an exception contains a lot of starch it is also present in certain vegetables so they are the main sources of starch as we have known them then the naturally occurring starches they basically consist of two units amylose which consists constitutes of around 10 to 15 percent of it or maximum up to 20 percent it is a long unbranched straight chain and amylopectin that constitutes of around 80 to 85 percent of starch that is a branched chain polysaccharide so starch basically consists of amylose and amylopectin units amylose is around 15 to 20 percent and amylopectin is around 80 to 85 percent of the total starch this one is branched sorry this one is straight chain and amylopectin is branched I can write it as straight chain and the other component is branched. So that means this will give you a this type of spiral appearance and the other one will give you a branched appearance like this. So the upon hydrolysis it yields only glucose molecules and this glucose because of the presence of this repetitive glucose molecules starch is also known as glucosan so this is another new name of starch that we have learned about it is also called as glucosan a starch is a white soft amorphous powder and it lacks sweetness so if we go for characteristics then it is soft powdery and it is tasteless as well as colorless and it also lacks sweetness it is insoluble in water and alcohol and either at ordinary temperature but if you put it in heating or in uh, you can say if you uh, try to solubilize starch in hot water then it breaks down into large fragments which are called as the dextrins and uh, do you know how dextrins are important to us many of us we use to starch our clothes so how do you put that starch to your cloth? You try to get that starch powder on instruction like that revive on the instruction packet it is written that mix it with lukewarm water. So that starch grains which you are getting in revive or any such commercially brand name available starch powder that is actually consisting of this amylose and amylopectin units when it is present in the packeted form. But once you are mixing it with lukewarm water it is breaking into dextrins and those dextrins provide stiffness to your clothes and that have been starched and ironed. Starch molecules are highly hydrated and it means it consists of many exposed hydroxyl or OH groups and when it is extracted in hot water it forms a turbid colloidal solution. So we know that it yields dextrin upon heating or being mixed with hot water and that provides stiffness to your clothes that is one of its most important characteristic and the starch molecules because they are hydrated so that is why when you mix it with lukewarm water it forms a turbid colloidal solution this you might have marked when you mix revive to water In plants, the starch is present in the resort form and uh, they are particularly called as the starch grains and in class 12, we will study a portion of genetics with it. Some of the starch grain will be having a centrally deposition like this and they will be having a flowery appearance like this. Some of them will be having 
appearance like this some of them will be having this flowery branched appearance to them so they can be deposited in various forms that is what i wanted to say and the starch grains they turn blue if you treat them with iodine solution and the empirical formula of starch because it is consisting of many repetitive glucose units so it is ch2o whole n and how does it link to each other it is just like that we have studied in case of maltose and you go on adding repetitive units to it so maltose was consisting of two units exactly and the linkage was between the past carbon atom of one starch unit sorry one glucose unit and the fourth carbon atom of the next glucose unit so you go on extending the chain like this and this basically forms the structure of the starch you can go on as much as you like okay so next let us see the structure of the next molecule that is otherwise called as the glycogen that is stored in our liver so basically glycogen is a homo polysaccharide and it is quite complex in its nature so it is a homo polysaccharide means consisting of same type of units and it is a major reserve food material in case of animals and it is present in the form of small particles it can be extracted with the liver tissue extraction and it is a reserve food material also that is present in case of fungi which we have read in chapter 2 if you remember it glycogen is composed of obviously repetitive glucose units as that of starch but that amylose and amylopectin structure is not there it is composed of glucose molecules and always it is having a branched chain appearance means amylopectin part will be there but amylose part will not be there so if you have only amylose units attached to each other you are going to form glycogen and if you have amylo sorry if you are going to attach only amylopectin units together you are going to get glycogen and if you are going to attach amylose with amylopectin that is the unbranched straight chain one with the branched one then you are going to get starch the chains are more shorter and compact like uh, in case of starch you are getting long chains of amylopectin but here the chains will be shorter and compact it is a uh, if you see for the physical characteristics then it is a white powdery substance and it is unlike starch it is quite miscible in cold water means you can dilute it in cold water also but for starch we were requiring lukewarm water to make it into dextrin it is comparatively more soluble in water than the amylopectins and it forms a suspension even in cold water as i have told you it is a non reducing sugar because the functional groups are not free and it turns red in color when it is stained with iodine solution and if you use dilute acids to hydrolyze it then you are going to get repetitive glucose units then now let's move over to the next polysaccharide that is otherwise called as inulin this is a new term to it starch and glycogen that you already know but inulin is also a homo polysaccharide and it is a reserve food material particularly to the plants which belong to the family compositae that is asteraceae family sunflower family and particularly in plants like artichoke dahlia in their roots you will find sufficient amount of inulin it is also stored in tubers and roots of certain other plants and mainly it is consisting of d fructose units till now we were talking about glucose units in case of starch and cellulose but here it is d fructose units which are linked by glycosidic bonds 
forming a straight chain. On hydrolysis, obviously inulin will yield very small amount of glucose and lot of fructose molecules. Glucose residues may be present somewhere in the fructose chain. Otherwise, where from we are getting them upon hydrolysis? And if you see the physical nature, then it is again a white powdery substance and like cellulose, it is quite miscible in water. And you will also find that it forms a colloidal solution when you mix it with warm water. It will not develop any color with iodine solution. So it gives a negative test to iodine. Means in the helix structure, iodine cannot be held and it is a non-reducing sugar. So, give, will give a negative test towards Fellings or Benedict solution. Now, this is all about the homopolysaccharides uh, and particularly the food storage polysaccharides. Now, let us come to the structural polysaccharides, right? So, in case of structural polysaccharides, we are going to study the important material that is cellulose. So, cellulose is a homopolysaccharide and it is generally present in the cell walls. So we are going to read the structural polysaccharides. And in structural polysaccharides we will study the first one that is cellulose. And we know that all plant cell walls are made up of cellulose. This we have been studying since we are very young. So all the cell walls or such type of structures are made up of cellulose. And cellulose is a long chain polymer. Obviously like glycogen or starch, it is consisting of repetitive glucose units and nearly 10,000 residues per chain. So quite a long molecule, isn't it? The long chain is further strengthened by hydrogen bonding which can form between one chain to another. It is insoluble in water. But the important part is that it is soluble in mineral acids or dilute acids and alkalis. And it can be hydrolyzed by strong acids like sulfuric acid, strong alkalis like sodium hydroxide and also by the enzyme cellulase. And once it is acted upon by the enzyme cellulase, it produces the units which are called as cellubiose. So cellubiose is nothing but the broken units of cellulose once it is acted upon by its specific enzyme. And with iodine solution, it doesn't give any coloration because it doesn't have a helical structure. Unless and until you are having a helical structure to you, you cannot, being a polysaccharide, you cannot hold iodine molecules and that is why that blue-black coloration cannot be marked. Cellulose is the most abundant organic compound that is present on earth and it is quite fibrous in nature. That is why it has a tensile strength to it, means you can stretch it a little. So it is tensile or stretchable and uh, most importantly the examples from here you can understand obviously I am talking about the cotton fibers which are used to make your dresses or fabrics or something like that and it is an important component component of wood also fibers of cotton are almost pure form of cellulose you will get around 90 percent of cellulose in it and apart from the cotton fibers you will also get Plants like agave, jute that I have taught you as phloem fibers, hemp. These all plants will also contain a lot of cellulose to their fibers. And they are used for the manufacture of mainly textiles or ropes. Cellulose is the bulk amount in the human diet. Because almost vegetarians so they eat only cellulose. And in case of non-vegetarian people, the plant material that you take that contains abundantly cellulose present in the cell wall of the cells. And 
once it is acted upon by certain bacteria in your intestine the cellulose changes into a chemical substance which is otherwise called as the roughage and roughage is the undigested part of cellulose which is very important for your bowel movements if you can't digest cellulose properly then you will have loose motions and if you are lacking in your diet proper amount of cellulose then you will suffer from constipation so constipation is a condition where roughage is not present in your excretory material so now i think it is clear to you that how it is important cellulose uh, as such it provides roughage and it cannot be digested and helps in smooth functioning of the intestine if you can say in case of ruminant animals like that of cattle sheep goat camel giraffe they are able to digest cellulose you know why it is not because ki they themselves contain cellulose inside there is a microorganism which is present in a part of their stomach which secretes cellulose enzyme that helps to digest cellulose so having said this let us come to the next component that is otherwise or next type of structural polysaccharide that is otherwise called as chitin once i tell this word what is coming to your mind the exoskeleton of cockroaches millipedes centipedes etc so chitin is a closely related structure to that of cellulose it is it is structurally as well as functionally very similar to that of cellulose it is a linear polymer of the amino sugar here the main repetitive unit is n acetyl glucosamine remember where you have studied this in the bacterial cell wall so quite a primitive structure it is a chitin is also present in the cell wall of fungi if you remember and exoskeleton of arthropods so if i tell its occurrence then it is cell wall of fungi or exoskeleton of arthropods right so it forms the cuticle in case of crabs insects prawns etc and chitin is quite soft and leathery but when you get it impregnated with calcium carbonate or some other proteins it can really turn into a hard structure so in case of millipedes or centipedes most probably the exoskeleton is plain chitin that is why it is soft and leathery but in case of crabs barnacles lobsters it is hard because of deposition of some extra material in it it helps obviously in providing strength and shape to the body where it is present as the exoskeleton and once you hydrolyze it using mineral acids obviously it will yield the glucosamine units and sometimes it will also yield some amount of acetic acid so if you break it then it can form acetic acid units as well as n acetyl glucosamine units glucosamine is an important component of some glycoproteins like the mucin that is present in your saliva chitinase which is secreted from the gastric juices of snails and bacteria can hydrolyze chitin and n acetyl glucosamine units can be made free so chitinase is the enzyme that i require if i want to digest chitin the next structural polysaccharide is pectin it is a homo polysaccharide and generally it is present in pulp of certain fruits like apples have you ever wondered that why you can make jellies out of the juices of certain fruits and some other fruits you cannot be used for the formation of jellies it is because if the cell wall of that particular fruit will be consisting of lot of pectin then it will help it to gelatinize and change itself to jelly form and generally it the main repetitive unit of pectin that is a strange chemical that is called as galact uronic acid so many galact uronic acid units when joined together they will form pectin and some of the free carboxyl groups which is present on this galactosidic acid unit that can be esterified with methyl alcohol and others can be combined with calcium and magnesium ions to provide it the structural peculiarity
The next type that we are going to study is mucopolysaccharides. So the word mucus is related to it. So you can understand what I am talking about. But till now I have told you everything about homopolysaccharide. But this mucopolysaccharides are the first group of substances that we are going to read. And they are the heteropolysaccharides. Means consisting of different type of units. And they are composed of not only a mixture of simple sugar but also derivatives of the sugar such as amino sugar, uronic sugar etc. And these substances, the word mucus is associated so they are quite gelatinous substances. And they act as the structural support materials for either the connective tissues or the muconic substances of the body. Structurally, they have a common feature. They consist of characteristically repeated disaccharide units and those disaccharide units might be containing uronic sugars which are held together by glycosidic bonds to the amino sugars and particularly all of them are quite acidic in nature. This is quite strange to them. Some of the important polysaccharides if I tell you then one of them will be mucilage like in lady's finger, whatever is present, uh, agar agar that you have studied in case of red algae or you have studied that agarose gel that is also coming under this category. The vegetable gum like from the drumstick tree, the red colored secretion that you get, that gummy substance is also a mucopolysaccharide. So if you talk about mucilage, it is present uh, mostly we have done the practical on china rose. So Parts of China rose contain it. Parts of lady's finger. They are also quite loaded with mucilage. You will also find. Isabgul I think all of you understand. Isabgul is otherwise having the scientific name as Plantago ovata. And Isabgul generally it is the husk or outer covering of the seed. And mainly it is consisting of galactose and mannose units. And once you soak them in water, it turns into a jelly-like mass which helps to relieve the conditions of uh, constipation. The next one that we are going to study is agar-agar. Already in chapter 2, we have studied that agar-agar is commercially obtained from certain marine red algae such as Gracilaria, Gelidium, Gigantina etc. And it consists of mainly D and L galactose units joined together. And once they are hydrolyzed, then they sometimes produce sulfuric acid, H2SO4 along with galactose. And it is generally a viscous gel. And uh, once you try to solidify it, then lower the temperature. And it is quite insoluble in cold water, but it is soluble in hot water. Agar agar has a great food value. You know that it is eaten in certain parts of China and Japan. So let me write down. It is consisting of D and L. Galactose units if I am not wrong and it has a lot of food value and generally for agar rose gel we use it in biology laboratories. Once you study about the molecular basis of inheritance you will find that agar agar mainly has food value and generally it is solid at low temperature and liquid at higher temperature. And this agar rose gel, it is a, you can say, refined form of agar agar and it is used as a culture media in biological laboratories. Lastly, we come to the vegetable gums. They are also mucopolysaccharides and generally they can consist of four types of monosaccharide units. They can consist of, I am talking about this. They can consist of glucouranic acid units. They can also consist of rhamnose. They can also consist of monosaccharides like xylose, mannose. These are the four types of monosaccharides quite common in uh, these vegetable gums. So with this almost we have come to the end of the structure of the different type of carbohydrates. Now summarize with me the functions of carbohydrates that we have studied till now. The first function is the role that they play in metabolism.
this is not new to you already you know about it so how they are important in our metabolic functions definitely the triosis tetrosis mentoges heptoses they are intermediates of various carbon pathways like that of photosynthesis and <clears throat> glucose generally it conserves the photosynthetic energy during respiration it is oxidized and it releases energy for various metabolic functions next glucose is mainly the blood sugar in case of animals in our blood also glucose is present so glucose can be taken into the cells from blood and tissues and there it can be utilized for production of atp in case of animals the mammary gland or secretions of the mammary gland or milk that also contains remember the milk sugar lactose so that contains a simple sugars like glucose and galactose units glucose and the products which are which we are getting from it upon its oxidation they are used for the synthesis of amino acids and fats that we have studied in am amphibolic pathway generally the pentose sugars that is the dna and rna sugar they are very very important because they are the major components of nucleotides and along with phosphates they form the backbone of nucleic acids and help to transmit the genetic information from one generation to another oligosaccharides particularly the disaccharides such as sucrose they are the main source of commercial sugar the sugar that you take in your milk or tea or coffee or other health drinks or as sweetener that is nothing but sucrose maltose sugars are the source of alcoholic fermentation or malt sugars or barley sugars and preparation of malt so they are also used as brewing industry raw materials polysaccharides such as starch glycogen or inulin they are the energy storing materials and they store food for both for plants and animals starch and inulin in plants and glycogen in animals so they serve as the reserve food material obviously the next one polysaccharides like cellulose chitin pectin mucopolysaccharides which we have just discussed they are the structural components of cells and tissues they provide strength and shape to the tissue or the forms where they are present or the organs where they are present lastly the cellulose fibers that are used for manufacture of textiles or ropes commercially they are also used as manufacture of papers cardboards from bamboo generally they are synthesized cellulose is the bulk animal diet and they provide roughage in diet and also in case of human beings so having said this we come to the end of our discussion on carbohydrates i hope i have made this topic quite clear to you Thank you.